Tacitus wrote, Nero and the Burning of Rome. He was a very dispassionate historian. He, he detested Nero, but he did not blame him for the fire. Nero did not start the fire, but he was very, very scared. Nero held the greatest party ever seen in the ancient world. In the beautiful prose of Tacitus, the emperor offered his gardens for the spectacle. For me, the issue was never Nero. The issue was Nero's guests. Who were Nero's guests? After five and a half years of covering farmer suicides, I think I have my answer. I think you have the answer. Who Nero's guess with? ये साइनाथ सर है, हम्म साइनाथ, ये मुंबई से पत्रकार है, पूरे दिन से, या दीपा बाई, दीपा मस्त मस्त, शिकुरा टेंगे, शिकुरा टेंगे, और ये आपका पिताजी था, हाँ हमारे पिताजी, तो हम जाते कौन सा? हमारे ये ये सीना, सीना, ये इसका कारण क्या था विष्णु? से जो सात बार रही था शेती का सर, उसपे बोझ था, और सोसाइटी का कुछ कर्जा था, बैंक का था। बैंक का कितना? पचास के नजीक हो गया, कम हो गया। हम्म, पचास के नजीक कितना? हाँ। सरकार से कुछ मिला? नहीं सर। माता जी को? नहीं। कुछ नहीं कुछ। तुम इतने साल तो भी बाहर रहते हो? सर नहीं आता मुझे जैसे वो लाची गेट जाके क्या पुष्ट नहीं करा तू सर ना सर नहीं पहले कॉलेज में लास्ट सर कॉलेज में लास्ट हाँ तो शिक्तो है का हो सर कितना है करता है सर बीए फर्स्ट ईयर साल में अच्छा बीए फर्स्ट ईयर इसमें आपका उम्र सर मेरी बाईस साल है बाईस यार उसी में परीक्षा लग बस एग्जाम शुरू हो गए थे और साइन अप का सर बी फर्स्ट उसका हुआ है सर और बी फर्स्ट सेकंड के लिए एडमिशन के वास्ते फीस नहीं थी इसलिए उसका इस साल ड्रॉप लिया सर
Well, there are hundreds and hundreds of pictures because there are hundreds and hundreds of suicides. Right, now this is Kasi Visweshwara Rao. He won the Progressive Farmer of the Year Award. This was a man who used to get angry at those, his fellow farmers who used to talk of suicide or say it isn't worth it. He always used to tell them that's nonsense. Farming is in our blood. It's what we will always do. And if you work harder, everything will be fine. In 2004, the Progressive Farmer of the Year took his own life. Her mother committed suicide in Anantapur district. Now, Sudha Mani's mother was a farmer who committed suicide. She was not entitled to compensation because society does not recognize women as farmers. A woman is a farmer's wife. I asked Sudha Mani, what is your enduring memory of your mother? She said, I wish I had a memory of my mother of when she was not working. When I slept, she was working. When I woke, she was working. After 11 years, we don't understand where we are going. Before, it was like that in a week, one person gave his own knowledge. I'm talking about 98. After 2002, every day, one, two, three. Now it's happening that we are going to get news every day, so we are going to get news every day. हर जिले से एक-एक दो-दो की खबर आती है। ये भाई कोलम साबंध से घर कौनता है? शुरुआती लाते नाम से विश्वास नहीं होता बस लगी बहुत बहुत अच्छे करते हैं मनोरंजन चाहे मुझे खूब अच्छे परिस्थिति है यूं के लिए लेता हूँ चाहे और पन बहुत नहीं ऐसा कदिस मुझे ऐसा कदिस सब विषय पन काला नहीं कदिस कहीं के लिए नहीं पन ऐसा अचानक इसके लिए नहीं काय होता मुझे जिसकी तू परिस्थिति सांते थी � अनि मुझे शेती वेती रखता है अनि की दूसरा कहीं स्नातो। तेज़ा मोड़े मंग शेती में देशर कहीं नहीं आला तर मंग तो सब बाकी चाहे चार तो परिणाम होता स्ना। लाना ची मोटी थाली तरह सा बाल ये तो त्याग ये तो होता है। तो दिवाली की मासा सौन उस वास लाये तो आपुन सगड़ घरात ला साफ सफाई करतो तो मग पेटी है ते पेटी तले सामान कागज पत्र ऐसा व्यवस्थित करतो सापुन तो आई कार थोड़ी कदी कदी तो मग बावन न पुण्डा संग थोड़ी कि है तुम जे कागज पत्र है आन की ते जल्ले कई कार्य चलते तो काम गया सो दस मुझे मला तेवड़ा � मैं आगरा एगरा माई न्यारी से जिंदगानी माल मरन भी आए खर अवगानी पानी माले हरी का माया कवितेचा काया जमीने तला काउसा त्याचा मुईले गोड़वा गोड़ उसा चा पेरा चा माया मरना ले कोनी मानो तीला येरा तेरा टांगा तटे वाला जैसा फूल और अदला कनोला You're looking at someone, you're making eye contact with a woman in this household where there's been a suicide, her husband has taken his life. After doing this for years, you know that she is also planning to take her life. <coughs> there is not a thing you can offer her by way of genuine solace or comfort. It's when you feel completely humiliated 
and you also feel that anger that <clears throat> here the fastest growing media in the world a politically free media but imprisoned by profit yes ya ma we have fashion correspondents we have glamour correspondents we have society correspondents not a single newspaper or channel in this country has a correspondent working full time on poverty the lakme india fashion week was functioning in mumbai and you had 512 accredited correspondents covering the event at the lakme fashion week that year the girls were displaying cotton gum in mumbai one hour's flight away in vidarbha the men and women who grew that cotton were taking their own lives at the rate of 6 to 8 each day ki aap log ko bhi wo effect hua ya kaisa ha na zarur hua kaisa effect hua ये जो गवर्नमेंट की नीति है वो खर्चा ज्यादा हो गया खेती पे और वो जो खेती में उत्पादन होता है उस पे भाव नहीं मिलता हमारे इधर कोई भी गवर्नमेंट का मदद नहीं नहीं आता, नहीं आता खाद हमारे को मंगाई से दे रहे साहब और अब सरकी भी मंगाई दे रहे हवारी का औसित भी मंगाई दे रहे हमारे गरीब लोग उसलिए हमारी महंगाई बढ़ गई सब और हमारे कपास निकलता कम ही वो कम रेट से भी दे सकते उधर हम उसलिए हमारे मोल मजूर करके खाना पड़ रहा सब दो दो लाख हो गया कर्जा क्या करेंगे एक लाख का बयाना डाले खत डाल दे माल हो रहा है पच्चीस हजार का फिर पच्चीस हजार घर के लिए सब लोगों को कपड़ा लग रहा है तो फिर देना क्या खाना क्या ये मुसीबत हो रही है सहा सात वर्ष मैं शेती वाता कहीं मे को तो उद्योग कि नौकरी न मिला मैं शेती उद्योग वालों तो मैं आठवत नहीं कि मैं चांगल गाँवक जेवन दिल कि मुला कि घर की आर्थिक सुधरने से चांगले कपड़े कि कभी मार्केट मध्य जाऊन आज खुशी पत्नी लाइ साड़ी कि स्वतः चांगले कपड़े घर अभी कभी आठवत नहीं शेती के लिए people in that household have committed suicide we were talking about 166000 people in debt taking their lives by their own hand and you're talking about families which have seen a second suicide and a third suicide in wave upon wave of suicide I remember his eyes. You see his eyes? Just those eyes. Again, wearing his father's clothes, who committed suicide. I'm tired of telling you the reasons. You can see in his eyes that he's really scared. He's been pitchforked into a position of responsibility he's not ready for. Look at his mother sitting next to him. Just just look at what her body language tells you. I remember this guy's eyes every time, every time I remember his eyes. I see a kid trying to be a man whose eyes show you how scared he is. Do you see his eyes? किसान बता रहा था बोले आत्महत्या आत्महत्या चालू चालू है बोले ये बंद नहीं हो रही बोले ये अब क्या करने का बोले कुछ तो भी करो बोले आप रास्ता बंद कर दो बोले इतने लोग मर रहे बोले वो कोई उसका केयर नहीं ले रहा बोले और ऐसे चलते रहेंगे बोले ये बंद होने के लिए एक ही है बोले रास्ते पे आके बोले मार डालो फिर बोले तो रास्ता बंद कर दो 
आणि अखिल भारतीय किसान सभेच्या एकशेसाव्या राष्ट्रीय अधिवेशनाच्या प्रसंगी जमलेलो आहोत की ही अखिल भारतीय हम किसान हो गए हमने कौन सा पाप किया हम पर कोई ख्याल नहीं दे कुछ भी कोई हमारा ध्यान नहीं देते कोई हमारी हाथ नहीं सुनते कुछ ना कुछ आपको करना होगा नहीं तो ये आत्महत्या होने वाली है This is Rukma by any Avatmal district of Vidarbha. Agriculture too expensive suicide for the same reason. Such a poor family, they cannot afford money. Any this town village. Suicide for the same reason. Harassment by money lenders. Agriculture too expensive. No credit from the bank. That's his young wife. Unable to feed his family. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Um, th I mean, I was speaking just before the budget in Delhi, and a friend of 25 years came up and said, I have only one request. For God's sake, say something positive. So uh, here it goes. Yeah. Um, there are 311 rupee billionaires in India, according to the business standard. The Times of India has discovered that India ranks fourth in the World Happiness Index. And this year, you're going to have two fashion weeks, because LACME and India Fashion Council have split. The good news is that poverty is back on the front page, thanks to the Hindustan Times. I have this item. I don't have anything by which I can show it to you. The Hindustan Times held a national and international conference in Bombay on luxury, where the millionaires who sell branded luxury products showed up. One of them is a, a sheikh from the Emirates, who when he went on, somebody mentioned the word poverty. This is a conference of millionaires who push luxury brands. And he broke down and wept because he said, I cannot stand the word poverty. You can see him crying. And the headline of the first lead on the story is, share of luxury for the poor. When the sheikh began to weep, luckily, Commerce Minister Kamal Nath was present to console him. He pointed out to the sheikh and to the audience that luxury is not only about rich people. The more luxury there is, the more poor people will benefit. Because you see, if you drink so much more champagne, someone's going to get some work somewhere. It also says that this was the most moving point of the luxury conference. And the audience gave the sheikh a standing ovation, many of them in tears themselves. <laughs> Hindustan Times have done this the next day. The Times of India had Rahul Bajaj on the edit page declaring that the, the whole approach to poverty was nonsensical. The heading of that piece says, Government must help the strong to help the weak. Because the old strategies of trying to help the poor are all stupid. They've all failed. So you make the rich amongst us really rich. And you see, when the table gets that loaded, something has to fall off. so excited because I wanted to do something. I didn't know how to go about it. There's so many people that I know that want to do something but don't know how to. We decided to have a party to remove 
or try to make poverty lesser in our country and make a difference. Mostly, we need to see the have-nots as key to our survival. We can't see them as different creatures from another world. They are the fresh laundry we have in the house every day. They're the fresh cut flowers in our bowl. You know, they're the fact that I have nicely blow-dried hair once in a while. They're our manicures and pedicures. We need them. They're our freshly cooked food on the table. We will party anyway, whether uh, we give money for charity or not. So in fact, we are uh, telling people, yeah, party, have fun, but donate some money too. So you had all this good news. I unfortunately have to tell you that I'm coming from Vidarbha, the heart of Maharashtra's cotton economy. Maharashtra is having eight other power cuts. And as always in India, all cuts and austerity have their class and caste hierarchy. Bombay city is yet to have a single power cut. Grade two cities have two hour power cuts. And the villages have eight hour power cuts. Now, in the middle of all this, to the first time in the history of this country, a geo-exempted mortuaries and post-mortem centers from power cuts because post-mortems in Vidarbha are occurring round the clock for the number of suicides that are taking place in four districts. Let me, let me simplify things to the point of taking risks. What is this agrarian crisis? Five words. The agrarian crisis. What is the agrarian crisis? The drive towards corporate farming. That is the agrarian crisis. How is this agrarian crisis operationalized? Five words. Predatory commercialization of the countryside. What does it achieve? Five words. The biggest displacement in Indian history.
पैदल They are spending up to 20 hours a day outside their homes. The youngest babies and children forget their mothers. The cruelty of what is going on is what is the most astonishing part of it. People coming out of fucking London School of Economics, you know, who don't know their ass from their elbow, assholes from the Harvard School of Development Studies, you know, Kennedy School studying development, sit as consultants with, you know, three-piece suits somewhere and make decisions for farmers whose lives they know nothing about, whose work they know nothing about. What, what, you've, what you've done in this whole period of the last 20 years is to reduce every form of human value to exchange value. So what are you doing? It's not profitable, so they shouldn't be in agriculture. Yeah, they should just lie down and die, tens of millions of them. You haven't created one new job in urban areas. The public sector is crumbling. The public sector of India, which is the biggest, the government, which is the biggest employer in the public sector, central public sector, has lost 900,000 jobs in 10 years. Nearly 1 million jobs have gone. So when we throw people out of agriculture, where is the industry? Where is the industry for people who are illiterate, for people? whom you don't give education, for people whom you don't provide literacy, for people whom you don't provide sanitation, for people whom you don't give the minimums of health, where do they go? Sure, let them leave agriculture. Even I don't want everybody to be in agriculture forever. Where do they go? Millions have left their homes and villages heading for the towns as employment in rural India has reached its lowest ever since we started keeping data. The 90s were the first time in your history since the Green Revolution the rate of growth of employment fell below the rate of growth of the population. Millions have left the villages as a consequence, searching for jobs that are not there. Countless thousands of families have broken up in the process as different members of families have gone to different venues looking for work. For the first time in the 90s in the history of this country, for the first time, the Supreme Court pulled up six states over hunger deaths for the first time resurfacing since the 1943 Bengal famine. In the last 15 years, the fastest growing sector in this country is not IT, it's not software, it's inequality. It has grown faster than at any time in our history since the time of the colonial Raj.
if you look at the Food and Agricultural Organization's report, State of World Food Insecurity Report, between 95-97 and 2000-2002, hunger fell in Ethiopia and rose in India. Hunger fell in two sub-Saharan countries and rose in this one, in this rich country. The per capita, net per capita availability of food grain actually fell and fell massively during the economic reforms years. There's been a severe, acute compression of the diets of the poorest Indians. तान उपासी ले करू भाकर मागते मायेले आसू डोल्यात आणून सूर्य दाखवे ले काले कवा दसी लवा माय भाकर आमाले खायाले कवा दसी लवा माय भाकर आमाले खायाले रात पासून नाही जेवलो भूक लागली पोटाले निऊ दे ना जरा बापू निऊ दे ना जरा बापू त्या गरम भाकरीले चटका दुरून अंगाले लागते फोड येतील तोंडाले आभाईचा गरम सूर्य डोंगरा आड गेला वाट पाहून भाकरीची ताना उपासी झोपी गेला During this period of spectacular rise in hunger, India exported, in those two years of 2002 and 2003, we exported 20 million tons of food grain when our own people were starving. We exported food grain, for instance, at 5 rupees 45 paisa kilogram, while selling it to poor people in our country at 6 rupees, 40, 6 rupees 40 paisa. Now, who did we export it to? We exported it for the cattle of Europe. That's whom we exported it to. You see, the cattle, the cow in Europe is the most food secure creature on the planet. Okay? About $2.7 per day is spent on its food security. So you see, when my friend Vijay Zavandia, who is a leading agricultural thinker of Vidarbha, was asked by a young journalist friend, Mr. Mr. Zavandia, what is the dream of the Indian farmer? Zavandia replied without hesitation, the dream of the Indian farmer is to be born a European cow. <laughs> the subsidies in the cotton world are amongst the worst in the world. They're dominated by the United States and by EU. In 2001, the value of the cotton produced in the United States was $3 billion. The subsidy was $3.9 billion. In 2005, the value of the cotton produced was $3.9 billion. The subsidy was $4.7 billion for 20,000 growers. You're talking about millions of dollars a day. Now this has destroyed cotton economies from Vidarbha to Western Africa. Mali, Chad, Burkina Faso, and Benin live on cotton. They too are rocked by farm suicides. The presidents of two of these nations wrote an article in the New York Times. Your subsidies are killing our people. What does the WTO do in this situation? 
it tells the farm it tells these four countries to diversify their product in other words the us will not lower its subsidies the eu will not lower its subsidies you grow something else the demand of being market friendly and viable is one made of the poorest farmers on earth not of the richest if viability of farmer is a problem no american farmer is viable i'll say it without hesitation no european farmer is viable but you want to make the demand of being market friendly and viable of the poorest people on the planet Is it, is it as good coffee as in California, for example? California doesn't grow coffee. California no, 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 you are talking about which coffee you are... First of all, I'm trying to tell you that you fuckers don't grow coffee. Hmm? You don't grow coffee. You get it from the third world. The West wants us to grow products which don't grow in their climate. Then the world is not drinking Indian coffee if it's good. Eat the Indian coffee in this. You didn't hear me. I'm trying to tell you that Indian coffee is consumed largely in Europe. The money is not in the coffee, the money is in the, in, in the value added, okay, in the processing. Now, if you try doing your own processing, I boycott you. I say your quality of processing, you can't do. Only us Europeans and white guys with blue eyes and blonde hair can do it. You guys would be alive if it were not for the third world. Your food comes from here. What do you guys grow in Finland? What do you grow? Oh, oh, come on, we have... We have we have potatoes, we yeah. have yeah, reindeer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't we just eat those and stay at home? <laughs> Four corporations and a few other minor players control the world of coffee. Coffee growers in Brazil went on strike around 1999-2000. So what did the major corporations do? The major corporations ordered gigantic amounts of coffee from Kerala and Kenya and Tanzania. So the Brazilian workers were out on a limb, extremely pathetically poor people. They were destroyed by the huge burst in coffee production in other parts of the world. So for two years, Kerala experienced a gigantic coffee price boom. Then the Brazilian workers, strike broken, come back to the fields. Then the corporations pull the plug on, price, on prices in Kerala and Kenya and Tanzania and wherever else, I don't know. This has happened with product after product, crop after crop. No European country grows pepper, to the best of my knowledge, in any significant scale. But you consume pepper in very large quantities. The guys who grow it, they're committing suicide because the entire structure of global trade the entire monopoly that Western corporations have over commodities in this trade, over agricultural and other products, mean that the, poor, that the third world farmer is looted and plundered of whatever little prosperity he had. Okay? Whether it's cotton growers in Vidarbha, whether it's pepper and coffee growers, you also share some of the responsibility of what's going on. Your corporations loot and plunder these people. आम्ही वासर वासर मुकी वरहाडी वासर गाय पन्हावतो आम्ही चोर काळतात धार टप टप घाम उन्हारत भोईवर मोती पिकवतो आम्ही तरी उपासी लेकर कापूस पिकवतो आम्ही घामाच्या पाण्यावर सतरा गाठी लुगळे आले आमची फाट की धोतर झाड जगवतो आम्ही काया भुईवर मुर्दा आमूचा अर्धाच जयते लाकूड नाही सरनावर नातेल बैलापरी आमूचे दुसऱ्या हाती दोर 
देला हिसका जात्याले तरी रगत आमुच सांड नारक He's trying and he's not getting me and I'm trying and I'm not getting him. <laughs> the district agricultural officer in Varda, they're very worried about the visit, no? Because the country's foremost scientist, agri agricultural scientist is visiting them as part of a study team. So they're concerned. I mean, I, I'm not saying he's a bad guy. I'm saying he's worried. I got cut off, Mr. Lokande. No, what I'm saying is 90% of the program he's meeting officials, not farmers. You see, he's, he's going to APMC, he's going to the biopesticide lab, he's going to the uh, uh, CCIR, he's going to the, uh, he's going to the collectorate. Many of the meetings are not with farmers. He should see the household of Mr. Shamrao Katali because... Now, my suggestion is, on the way we go to Ashti, and we can say, hello, hello. We are, we are negotiating his program. Look, I trust the team. The team that is coming from the National Commission of Farmers, these are very eminent people. So its recommendations will have to be listened to. Whether they will act on those recommendations, that I have doubts. Understand this, when inequality deepens in society, the farm sector takes the biggest hit. I have covered farmers who have committed suicide because they could not get 8,000 rupees at a decent rate of interest in 2003, early 2004. And then I have gone back to my house as an urban middle class professional, sir, and got a letter from my bank offering me Mercedes Benz at 6% interest, no collateral required. What kind of justice is there in that society? What kind of justice is this? There is no sphere of activity in this country in which the rich are not subsidized. You give five bucks to the poor, you call that a subsidy. You give five million to the rich, that's an incentive. The richer you are, the bigger the subsidy you get, or rather, the bigger the incentive you get. Just within the budget, we're giving the Indian corporate sector concessions, freebies of six million dollars per hour. Outside the budget, we give them free lands, subsidized electricity. We exempt them from a range of municipal taxes. Look at Mumbai. Most of the electricity in this city is consumed by the malls and the multiplexes. A 20-minute power cut in the main Mumbai. You can give two hours of electricity to all the troubled districts of Vidarbha. But that's not going to happen because you can't take away 20 minutes of power from the beautiful people and their malls and their multiplexes. Look at the hospitals, look at Leelavati, look at Apollo. Huge amounts of public land transferred to them 
on the ground that 30% of their beds would be reserved for the poor. This has never happened in theory or in practice. Do you know what the Standard Chartered Bank has been paying for decades for occupying 3,600 square yards of some of the world's costliest real estate? Less than one rupee per square foot. It's very clear who the government exists for. When the sensitive index of the Bombay Stock Exchange fell, it took two hours for the then finance minister to arrive in Bombay by a special flight, yeah, to hold the hands of, I mean, to hold the hands of weeping billionaires. Yeah. It took 10 years for a prime minister of the country to visit a farm household in a state where over, in this state, where over 40,000 farmers have committed suicide since 1995, according to government data. It took 10 years for the governments to think up of some sort of a rehab package for these farmers. It takes two hours for a finance minister to land up at Dalal Street, India's Wall Street, you know, to soothe the nerves of uh, sensitive billionaires. My, my, I, I suppose my enduring response to it is one of real anger. It's inhuman, it's unjust, inhuman and obnoxious how you respond to the issues of the poor in this country. One concluding little story. When I joined Jawaharlal Nehru University in 1977, as a student of history, I read Tacitus. Tacitus wrote Nero and the Burning of Rome and the Annals of Rome. Tacitus said, he was a very dispassionate historian. He, he detested Nero, but he did not blame him for the fire. Nero did not start the fire, but he was very, very scared. And therefore, he had to distract the masses. Nero held the greatest party ever seen in the ancient world. In the beautiful prose of Tacitus, the emperor offered his gardens for the spectacle. Everybody who was anybody in Rome was there at this party. The senators, the nobility, the gossip columnists of that time, the page three people, all of them were there. Now they had a problem, and you can read it in Tacitus. The problem was one of lighting in that huge garden. How did you create the illumination necessary for such a gigantic party? Nero solved it. He brought many criminals and prisoners and burnt them at stake. In the beautiful prose of Tacitus, they were doomed to the flames, thereby to provide the nightly illumination. For me, the issue was never Nero. The issue was Nero's guests. Who were Nero's guests? What sort of a mindset did it require for you to pop one more fig into your mouth as another human being burst into flames? What sort of mindset did it require for you to drop those grapes into your jaws as another pathetic person on a crucifix or whatever, on a stake, burned to provide you illumination. These were the sensitive elite of Rome. These were the poets, the singers, the musicians, the artists, the historians, the intelligentsia. How many of them raised a protest? How many of them put up their hand to say, this is wrong, it should not happen, it cannot continue to the best of our knowledge? 
from Tacitus's history of that event. Nobody did that. Nobody did that. For me, I always wondered who were Nero's guests. After five and a half years of covering farmer's suicides, I think I have my answer. I think you have the answer, who Nero's guests were. I'll tell you this, we can differ on how to solve this problem. We can differ on even our analysis of the problem, but maybe we can make one starting point. We can all agree that we will not be Nero's guests. Thank you. There are a number of other questions, but we have totally run out of time. I'll hang around I'll individually and yeah. try and find I'll have to request people to speak to Simon. You can stop the suicides quite easily. If this government had even brains, I mean, let alone cynicism, if it had even brains, stopping the suicides is much easier than stopping the rural districts. Yeah. What are the policy measures you want? One thing the Mahatma, who was the most prolific journalist India ever produced, said, let me give you a talisman. Recall the face of the poorest and weakest person you have met and ask yourself how the action you contemplate will place him or her in greater control of his life. I would give that same principle for journalism. Why is that not replicable? Who says it's not? We don't want to is a different matter. Oh, pol political? Also class interests. So it's a very, very important thing. Yeah. We'll have to vacate the hall. Okay, right. Sorry, you had one question. Let me answer it on the way up. Yeah. Somebody had, yeah, you had a question. Let me try your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that you're right. To affordable food is greater than my right to an affordable Mercedes Benz. The poor are a minority in your country. You can get away with it. When they are 600 million, you can't. Sir, one last question. Whose last question is this? Mine. <laughs> <laughs> Join the club. There's a billion people who are not.